What is Google Compute Engine? Hey everyone, Garth Schulte from CBT Nuggets. In this micro nugget, we're going to talk about the Google Compute Engine. What is it? What are the features and components? What can we do with it? And I'll show you how in just a few minutes we can spin up our own virtual machine in the cloud. We'll throw a web server on it, we'll put a web page inside of that web server and serve it up to the world. So Google's Compute Engine is their infrastructure as a service offering. It's one of the products in the Google Cloud platform that allows us to spin up virtual machines, known as instances, in the cloud hosted, managed, and running inside of Google's data centers. When we create an instance, we're gonna specify a machine type, which is gonna determine the physical specification of that virtual machine. The number of uh, virtual CPUs, the amount of memory, how many persistent disks it can support, that kind of thing. And you can see there's a lot of tiers in here to choose from. And within these, there are more tiers that will uh, really allow you to customize your machine for the kind of workload that you're expecting. From there, we have resources. Resources we're going to create and attach to our virtual machines. And the real beauty behind Compute Engine in Google's cloud is that all of these resources are scoped, meaning they're independent. So it's a very modular system. If we were to create an instance and, and tie a disk to it, if that instance were to get deleted or something bad were to happen and it were to crash, our resources are fine because they're independent. We could easily spin up another machine, reattach the resources, and be right back where we were. And to go over some of these here, we have disks, known as persistent disks. Anytime you spin up an instance, we need a disk that contains an operating system and a root file system, and then we can attach more persistent disks that contain our data. Images provide everything that our instance needs to run. So a bootloader, an operating system, and a root file system. At the free level, we have Debian and CentOS. At the premium level, we have Red Hat, Enterprise Linux, SUSE, and Windows Server 2008 R2. You can also create your own custom images from these flavors. We also have networks and firewalls that we can create to control traffic to and from our instances. Addresses. Each virtual machine can have up to two addresses. One internal required address for communicating within the network and an optional external IP address. We also have regions and zones, and this is where we can determine where our virtual machines and our data lives. And a lot of these resources are scoped at either the zone level or the global level, available to everything. In fact, disks are scoped at the zone level. This is what makes them independent, so they're not tied to an instance, and your data is replicated across the data centers in that zone, so it's, it's uh, redundant and reliable. Instances are also scoped at the zone level, so that means if we create a disk in a zone, only instances within that zone will be able to use that disk. Addresses are scoped at the region level. Images, networks, and firewalls are all known as global resources, accessible to any zone within a project. Think of a project as your own private network, your own cluster of virtual machines. On the feature front, Compute Engine offers a pretty impressive server-side load balancing function that allows us to redirect incoming traffic across pools of virtual machines. So we can use this to, to, to distribute heavy load. We can use it as a, as a way to provide redundancy when failures happen. It's really nice, and we have full control over it because we can create forwarding rules that match and direct certain kinds of traffic to the load balancer that will then distribute it across these pools of machines. I should also note that Google's load balancer doesn't require any pre-warming, so it can instantly scale to support those spiky traffic patterns. We also have sub-hour billing. Many cloud competitors out there do hourly billing. You're billed by the hour. In Google's cloud, you're billed by the minute with a minimum of 10 minutes. So if you use your instances for 12 minutes, you're only paying for 12 minutes rather than a full hour. And Google also recently announced 30 to 85% price cuts across the Google Cloud platform, as well as sustained usage discounts. So the more you use it, the bigger the discount. Global scoped images. And this is a really cool feature because if you've used any of the other clouds out there, you know that you either can't use images across regions or you need to copy your images across regions. Google maintains a global repository for all images and custom images. So it's one spot and we can use them from anywhere. It also has a very robust and integrated networking system. You can create virtual networks, private networks, public subnets, firewalls, routes, gateways, ACLs, the whole ball of wax, and it's all integrated and easy to work with. You can't really talk about Google's cloud platform without mentioning performance, and in the Compute Engine, it's no different. Blazing fast network speed along with consistent disk I.O. And as we saw when we talked about images, we have a whole smorgasbord of Linux-based operating systems available, and Windows was just recently announced. Another brand new feature recently announced, Live Migration, and this is a big differentiator between Compute Engine and the competition out there. In the competition, what happens when your virtual machine needs to get taken down for maintenance? you'll get an email a few weeks or a few days before that happens. In Compute Engine, it's all transparent, it's all under the hood. Google will actually migrate your instance to another instance, so they can take down the original instance for hardware or software maintenance, and this is all transparent. You'll never see it. Your instance could go down 10 times in a day, and you'll never notice a difference. So it all equates 
to zero downtime, which is a pretty big deal out there in the IT industry these days. And the fact that it's transparent is just icing on the cake. So with all that said, why don't I give you a quick demo to show you how easy and quick it is to spin up a virtual machine in Google's cloud. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is look at this from uh, the easy perspective, and that is using Google's Cloud Console. It's got, they have a nice GUI that you can use to do this stuff manually. So next, next, finish type stuff. And then I'll show you the really powerful way to do it, and that is using the Google Cloud SDK. There's a couple of utilities in there, G Cloud and GC Util that we can use to do all this stuff locally. So it opens it up to scripting out all of these actions. So let's bring up Chrome. And I've already got a session ready to go here, but if you wanna to get to this point, head to cloud.google.com, sign up, and then create a project. I created a project called GCP Nuggets, went into that project, and now you can see all the Google Cloud pla uh, platform, ooh, say that one 10 times fast, all the GCP products over here on the left that we can use to manage. So let's choose Compute Engine, and that'll take us right into Instances. And here's a bunch of resources here that we can work with, so here's disks. Here's, uh, if you wanna see all the available images, here they are. They're constantly keeping these distros updated as well. Here's, here's the latest Debian 7, for instance, that they just released today, as a matter of fact. And then they deprecate old ones. But if we go back up to instances here and choose new instance, fill out an instance name, description, uh, metadata about it, and then you can choose your zone, machine type, boot source image, any additional per persistent disk that you want to attach, and you can configure networking. You hit the create button in literally seconds, you will have an instance up and running that you can SSH into and do whatever you want with. All right, so let's do this for real, the hardcore way, using the Google Cloud SDK. So let's bring up the terminal shell. And, uh, and this is the exact walkthrough that's on Google's, that's in Google's documentation for Compute Engine. So I'll give you the link for that if you want to try this on your own. But essentially what I'm going to do here is first we need to download the Google Cloud SDK. So we're going to curl for it here inside of our terminal. This will get everything, uh, all, the, all the binaries, everything we need here to work with Google Cloud locally. And, uh, and we're just going to say, uh, yeah, extract that here. Yeah, overwrite it since I've already got it in there and then we will improve the customer experience. Sure, why not? If you're doing any sort of app engine integration, then you can download uh, everything that you'll need to tap into the Google Compute Engine APIs from your language of choice here. We're not gonna do any, anything with app engine here. We're just gonna work with Compute Engine directly, but this is gonna install everything we need. Ask us if we wanna update our bash and add it to our path and enable bash shell completion. Sure, all of those things. And now the first thing we need to do is authenticate with the cloud. And this is where we use the G Cloud utility to do so, along with the auth, login flags. G Cloud Auth Login, it's just gonna ask for permission to give Google permission to know who we are and, and, and permission for everything we're about to do on their cloud. And there we go, now we're authenticated. And now if we head back to uh, iTerm here, it's gonna ask us for our cloud's project ID, which is GCP Nuggets, just like so. And that's it, we're now logged into the cloud, ready to go. So now we can start using the GC Util utility and, uh, and do whatever we want, we can manage all aspects of Compute Engine. We can manage our project, instances, disks, snapshots, networks, you name it, we can manage all those resources that we talked about and then some. So if we just do a GCUtil list instances, this will go out and get all the instances. We don't have any yet, so that's why it's not showing anything, but that would show all the instances that we have. Now let's go ahead and, uh, and create one here, and I'm just gonna grab, some, grab the command line so you don't have to watch me type all this stuff out. And you can see what we've specified here is a gcutil add instance, name of the instance, gce-micronugget, the machine type that we're going to use, n1 standard 2, the image that we want to use, and we're just choosing Debian 7. Notice we didn't have to specify the entire name of, of, of the image. If you just choose the distro and then that version, it'll get the latest release for that version. So that, that'll grab today's release that we saw in the image resource area in the Cloud Console there. The zone wait until running, it'll block all access until it's actually up and running, and then auto delete the boot disk when uh, we tear the instance down. So this is all we need to do. If we hit enter here, it's gonna connect to the cloud, spin up that instance, and watch how fast it's gonna spin up this instance. It will be super fast. You can see here that it resolved this Debian 7 here to the latest version. Pretty cool. So that's, this is a, I mean, you could probably count to 20 maybe, and it'll be spun up. In fact, probably pretty close. If we head back to the cloud console here and go to instances, there it is, all spun up and ready to go. All right, let's get crazy. So if we're gonna serve a web page from this machine, we need to add a firewall to it. So let's add a firewall, gcutil add firewall. We're gonna call this incoming HTTP okay, so we're gonna allow incoming HTTP traffic onto this machine. All right, so we'll add the firewall. And, uh, and while that's going, the next thing we're gonna do is get ready to SSH into this machine. So once we have a firewall there, the machine's all ready to go, we'll SSH into it, and then we'll install Apache 2. We'll put a web page on it, We'll see that web page from our browser externally, and we'll call it a day. All right, so that's good. Our, our firewall's on there. Let's just do a gcutil ssh into that machine. This should get us right into there. 
And look at that, we're on the machine. We're SSH'd onto it, how cool is that? Now let's just run a sudo apt-get update to update our repo here. Now let's install that web server. sudo apt-get install Apache 2. Say yep. All right, we've got a web server, now we just need a web page. So then I'll create a very basic hello world web page, store it as index.html in the root of the web server. Now we just need the external IP address, which is right here. You could also use gcutil and do a get instance followed by the name of the instance. Let's just copy that. Head over to a new tab, paste it in here, hit enter. Hey, look at that, hello world. So that page is getting served to the world from our virtual machine inside of Google's infrastructure. Great stuff. In this CBT Nugget, we saw what the Google Compute Engine is all about. We saw that it's Google's infrastructure as a service offering for running virtual machines in the cloud. We also saw how to spin one up using the Google Cloud SDK. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.